Welcome to our NPTEL courses on power quality improvement technique. Today we are going to we are continue with the PWM rectifier that will be our third lecture for single phase. And where we have left in our previous class, we will start from that. That is current control waveform because there is as you have seen there is a inner current control loop that will be fast in the response and there is outer voltage control loop that will be a slower in a response and implementation is easier for the buck, uh, for this boost converter. So, if you study little bit of literature, you will find that several authors have reported several methods for the current control technique. So, we are required to check that what is best solutions or the what is optimal solution from our design. So, for this reason we should put some constraint to evaluate what is the best method of the current control. So, we should be uh, validated to provide the converter dynamics that is one of the requirement is that it required to be sufficiently fast. So, that it can respond fast in change of load or other dynamics such as converter always operates near the assuming operating point because that is where you have the stability. Another condition you require to find that no good condition uh, on system parameters which can justify the approximation is presently known for the basic converter topology. It is well understood in the field of the control system that when converter dynamics are not sufficiently fast, the then the quasi static approximation yields neither necessary or the sufficient condition for the stability. So, what I want to say that why it is you have to understood it. Let us say you have designed a buck converter or a boost converter with MOSFET with a switching frequency 20 kilohertz. Now, the moment because of the higher power rating you want to design the same entity buck converter or boost converter generally boost converter as I discussed because it is easier to implement and you want to make it with the uh, GTO and that is what happened instead of the 20 kilowatt you require to operate sub kilohertz level maybe uh, 500 hertz. So, then what was the stable there it would not be, but you have changed the value of the inductor accordingly and all those constraint has been maintained, but the quasi static analysis may not be sufficient for the slow behavior. And such behavior can be observed in the rectifier system, Watts case analysis proves stability and should be employed for the simulation in this case for check that whether it perform best in a in terms of the simulation term it will call it is Monte Carlo condition. Now, let us see the same boost converter how it can be worked in a current control mode or current program control. So, this is your uh, voltage we assume, but this voltage may be like this and the current also will be like this. So, that it does not have a reflections of it into the DC site in the into the AC site. So, what happen what you will do, but our discussions will be constrained within this part. So, this is the value of the inductor and it is to be chosen above the critical conduction mode. So, you sense this inductor current and ultimately you know that when it will switch on the inductor current will ramp on and thus what happen you know you have a V control and from there you will multiply it is generally of sinusoidal rectified sinusoidal fashion of the double frequency oscillations. So, you multiply it and thus you get some constant Vg into V control, where V control comes from the uh, uh, maybe from the output as well as the sac or the swell. So, then what happened you know you ask to ramp on till you know that there is a 
bo highest boosting rate. So, for this reason duty cycle is your fixed to some limit. So, so for this reason this ramp will be compared with the clock. So, as long as clock is high, so you will get a output here and ultimately you will map with it. The moment current value goes above this within the clock period of time goes above this it will reset otherwise clock will drive the MOSFET or the IGBT depending on the rating of the device and it will be a current control mode. So, you are controlling the RAM the once it crosses the limit you will turn off the switch. So, that is what we can say that current uh, program control is a natural approach to obtain because it is had a inherent short circuit protection you do not allow current to be very high. Obtain input registration uh, register emulation ultimately it will emulate the because you know this is your voltage and this is your current and ultimately they are in the same phase thus you are emulating this pattern. The peak transistor current program to follow the input voltage generally it will have a double frequency oscillations and thus what happen. So, in the uh, before rectification there is no distortion and less THT. So, peak transistor current, peak transistor current from the average inductor current, peak transistor current differs from the average inductor current because of the inductor current ripple and the artificial ramp. This is the artificial ramp you will generate from the clock by means of the integration. This leads to the significant input current waveform distortion this is the one of the problem because it may not match with the ramp because you are integrating this. Uh, so, you, you wanted to basically control the rate of change of the uh, current into the inductor uh, and it has to match it. So, you can be programming like this. So, this is the one way of controlling. So, this is called a current program control and it has one of the advantage so, static input, uh, so it is IGTS, if you are working on a discontinuous conduction mode it is quite challenging to operate. So, it will be VG L C L I C square switching frequency minus uh, V minus VG, VG plus M into L A in DCM, but this equations in the CCM will be very much simplified that is I C minus 1 minus V G by T into M into this one. So, what we can say that at the boundary condition that means when transition occurs to CCM to TCM then I G of T of T S has to follow this logic if it is equal then it is in, in boundary condition if it is more than it is in CCM. So, T S by V 12 V G by V 1 minus V G by V or I C of T equal to T S by V L M A L by V plus V G by T 1 minus V G by T. So, it is desired that I C should be equal to V G by R E. So, minimum slope compensations we want that V G by 12. So, this is the slope that you will get. So, we want to have a slope compensation you act on a slope thus this method is quite fast than your current mode control different current mode control. And the static input characteristics of the this uh, current programming mode boost converter we, we can see that this effective resistance become 2 L by T S that it is your best resistance and you can see that you know how it will be changing this value. So, when duty cycle is this ratio V G by V 
and this is the your current Ig. So, you, if you see that this ratio if it is less you know till this is the envelope of the CCM and the DCM below it it will be DCM after that you will have the 0.1 of the base value and gradually you know at this point around 2 you will have this is to be the base value and thereafter base value will increase. So, you can control the resistance equivalent resistance of the circuit, but you see that what you know if you want to operate at higher resistance that means at the no load. So, your DCM is quite large. So, for this reason you know the control will fail, but whereas if you try to load highly load this devices or you load close to the your best resistance then their DCM value is optimal this is that our DCM value after that you can see that there is a range of the CCM increase uh, DCM increases. So, is a challenge to operate this PFC we call it is power factor correction in a low uh, in a no load condition for this the discontinuous operation. So, let us see that we have uh, considered that Ig by I peak as a normalized value. So, input current wave form with the current mode control that it is re with respect to the omega. This will be sinusoid and it will be close to sinusoid if R e equal to 0.1 then gradually it will start to be picky. 0.33 and you can see like this and once this happened to 10 times you can understand that there will be a quite picky current. So, a substantial dis uh, distortion will occur in a waveform if you have a higher resistance best resistance. So, to meet and can meet the harmonic limit if range of the operating point are not too large that is the condition. So, you can see that you are operated for this uh, R if it is more than R then you will find that picky kind of transition and THT will not be fulfilled by any of the standard. So, for this is we say that the difficult to meet the harmonic limits in a universal input supply. So, it required to redesign the circuit mostly we change the switching frequency that is something in your hand because switches are costly, but if you change the within the network then generally chips gives the provision to set the switching frequency. Then what we do generally we require if you find that ultimately you know this is the TS, TS is the switching frequency. So, we have to play around with the TS so that you can keep close to the sign envelope. So, how to do that? This is the hysteresis control uh, as I told you that you see 3, 8, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 6 are belong to this category the critical condition mode and it is the hysteresis control it will ultimately you got VG and you will generate the constant hysteresis band while discussing the uh, PWM technique I have discussed it is about the hysteresis. So, this will be the hysteresis band this is the and you want that this current required to be restricted green one is your this current. So, what happened you know you got an inductor that you have switch. So, you start from this point crosses your value of Vg then it will 
touch the over uh, this upper envelope and thus switch will open up previously till this point to this point switch was switch was closed. Then automatically the current will discharge and assuming that it is a continuous conduction mode, so current will fall here. Again, one it will heat the lower limit. Again, this switch T1 will be closed and the another, this RAM will be repeated. So, this RAM is basically the MA. Okay. So, in that way, this chip will work. So, this is the case of the hysteresis controller. And, and there is a uh, one chip. FAN 562 that is for the Fairchild chip. So, these will have a different mode of condition. Generally, it will on considering that the, amp, uh, the voltage level of the VG. So, let us go back and understand it what does it mean by that. Uh, so, what happen? You have this voltage VG and current Ig will be ramping on till it touch this value. Then it will be off and then it will again touch this value. It will be off and again touch this value. It will off. So, what happen here? You need not have to get the input. You need not have to sense this current and ultimately you got a petal like waveform and if you filter it out, but here filter is a challenge. You require to have a you, this petal kind of waveform, this petal kind of waveform will essentially replicate this sinusoidal waveform, this one. This is the way it will work. So, ultimately it will filter, ultimately your input current will be chopped like this. So, Australian a uh, Sydney opera something like that. So, you will get like this. So, this is the way of condition and what happen here you require to have this mode because you can see that inductor current you have to follow and track it like that mostly it works in a continuous conduction mode. But here you can go till discontinuous conduction mode and it can operate in a discontinuous conduction mode for the lower load. So, for if you have a lower load this merge is preferred for the higher load this mode is preferred. So, let us implement it into the practical circuit. So, you got a EMI EMC filter x and y there is a differential mode filter and the common mode filter I have not shown in detail of it. This is a practical circuit. Of course, there will be a anti parallel diet. So, ultimately you have this V g here and from there you will sense V g and you should have a V control. V control is something that will take care of this what is the whether there is a voltage sag or swell anything that we multiply and ultimately you will get VR. And VR once you multiply you can say that it is a function of VG plus Kx into V control. So, thereafter what happen you will sense the current and you will emulate the resistance Rs by the PI controller mostly and you will compare it thereafter if this this multiplications of the I L into R S is more than the drop then you are going to reset this flip flop otherwise there will be a zero crossing detector in zero crossing detector you will start every cycle and it will be stopped till 
this op amp import op amp, uh, of this point higher of point 3 is higher than the uh, higher than the input of at the op amp point 2 so that you are going to reset this is a buffer you know why because it is it can be you can you can easily implement this circuit of course the chip is available to you by discrete components you know this is the unity feedback op amp voltage follower and of course you are going to give a resistance of it because you require to sink a certain amount of the current that has to be provided by the buffer because these devices cannot provide this much of this. Ultimately here if you wish if you see that you are not here. So, there is a clock it is a synchronous generally what happened here it has been reset at every zero crossing. So, it can run in a asynchronous mode also that is also a of the added feature to this circuit. So, what are the advantage and disadvantage or the pros and cons of this uh, critical conduction mode control? One aspect is that nowadays it is quite cheap simple low cost controller for ICs. So, we you can fabricate the ASICs and it is already available for past I think 15 years. So, you can make those easily. Low frequency harmonics are small with constant transistor on time for the boost converter. So, it can be eliminated since you can operate into a discontinuous conduction mode. So, size of the inductor is quite less, but however, you will increase the peak current you have a petal kind of waveform. So, there is a increase in the peak current and thus EMI AMC will be more and for this reason you can see that we have put that some extent it is something like to stop the bleeding we put some EMI AMC condition, but where there is a stringent EMI EMC requirement this kind of uh, design may not satisfy your design purpose we require to have a different design procedure we may require to have a soft switching also for that reason. So, increase conduction loss reduce switching loss because number of switching because is less because a in if you compare this method here switching is quite high, but where here switching is less, but if switching is less mean switches are operated at a longer duration. So, conduction loss required to be higher, but MOSFETs generally have lower conduction loss and the higher switching loss and for this reason it has been preferred. However, this requires larger input filters as well as uh, because uh, you know this will be reflected in AC site, AC is your input and thus it has to make a sinusoidal and thus you require to have a large input filter and thereafter variable switching frequency uh, smear out the EMI current. So, once you have a high DVDT and you got also DIDT with this interference of the both EMI will be produced and spectrum cannot synchronize the converter switching frequency you will find that some awkward spectrum is also coming for the due to the variable switching frequency. But anyway we use it very frequently transistors is on for the fixed time T on generally it is a constant T on operation 
and transistors is off when inductor current reaches to 0. So, you are always in a critical conduction mode. So, ratio of Vg to Ig equal to Re 12 by T on, on time as a function of the load because you have to ramp on and thus we can calculate the value of the inductor by the inductor voltage balance method. So, charge should not be stored into the inductor. So, V g t into t on V g minus V into t off if you solve it t off should be equal to t on that is what we want the symmetrical triangle. So, t on a will be V g by this one and if you can solve it. So, solve the uh, controller varies from the switching frequency. So, T s equal to T of plus T on and T s will be 4 L p by V m square 1 by 1 minus V g by V and thus you can change this switching frequency if required if to make it a fast and low depending on the resistance. For sinusoidal line variation switching frequency we require we assume that with respect to, with respect to this we can consider that since it is a 50 hertz and the switching frequency is maybe you can put it it will be in a kilohertz with respect to this switching frequency uh, with respect to a particular operating point we can consider that this vg is almost constant that is our approximation. So, it is a quasi static process. So, it is slow very though you, it is 50 hertz is for us it is quite fast, but with respect to the switching frequency it is a quasi static process. And thus the sinusoidal line voltage variation the switching frequency therefore, will be varies as follows 1 by T s V square m by 4 L p 1 minus V m by V sin omega t. So, there will be a little variation of the switching frequency because of the slowly varying voltage. You may fit it to the this applications in avionics. Avionics generally require a 400 hertz supply. So, there also you can fit it and it will work. The minimum and the maximum limit of the switching frequency thus you can calculate that is F s V square m by 4 L p and minimum will be V square m by 4 L p 1 minus V m by V. This equation can be used for the selecting inductor value of L. So, now let us come to the control part of it. We, we have said that it is a quasi static process. So, we can apply the control uh, no, linear control and we can get a satisfactory results. But how much it is acceptable? So, can attain the simple control of input current waveform without sensing the AC input voltage. This is the one of the merit of this previous method you know this petals method. So, petals method does not require to sense the actual voltage and and operates with the continuous conduction mode. So, because it will charge the petal always and it is always a continuous conduction mode. The integrals of the sensed switch current the charge is compared with the carrier wave that is a nonlinear carrier wave because of this modulation in a cycles by bicycle species. So, every cycle it will be control carrier wave form depends on the converter topology our discussion is totally depend on the boost converter and that is the simplest and you can carry on this, this for the buck and other you will find lot of difficulty. Very low harmonics in CCM and wave distortion occurs in DCM. So, we want to operate this in CCM, 
peak current mode console control is also possible with a different carrier and that also gives you the steady state st stability. Here this is the inductor, uh, this is a nonlinear, uh, this is a control block diagram or nonlinear carrier charge control of the boost converter. This is IS, this is a current through the inductor and this is VC and this is VI. You can see that you sense the current thereafter by the coupling inductor. So, it will be reflected into you and ultimately uh, there is a switch, switch can on off. So, generally uh, uh, if you, you will be shorting the capacitor once this output voltage is go high, otherwise it, it will be off. So, this will be go to the V i, so V i will be charging because of this capacitor and you will compare with this V g that is the control uh, waveform V c and you will compare it once this V g by V c will be reached you have a turn on, so you will reset the latch. And so, you will be switching on this uh, devices and this is the way it will work. So, thus what we can say this is the average switch control because of the capacitor and ultimately you can integrate over it. We make the controller to regulate the average switch control by integrating the monitored switching current, previous was the peak current, resetting the integrator to 0 at the beginning of the each cycle, this is the way you are resetting this integrator by, uh, by discharging this capacitor every time. Tuning of these transistors when integrator reaches the reference value. In the controller diagram, the integrator follows these equations V i equal to 1 by C 0 to T I s by n and thus what happen I s by T s n C n for this discharging operation. So, from there you can say that the effective current and becomes I g that is V g by R e V control and the rate uh, to re we relate this switch control input current assuming that it is CCM. So, it will be I s of T T s equal to D T I G T of T s the rate of the input voltage to the output voltage assuming that it is CCM will be V g equal to D T into V t and thus we can substitute these equations to find out the average current that is we have I s by T s equal to D t 1 minus D t V t by R e and from there whole derivations is there. I wish the student to go through the derivation. So, uh, this is uh, the value of I s and thereafter to generate carrier wave. So, ultimately D will be replaced by T by T s if you replace V c equal to V control T by T s 1 minus T by T s. So, you get V c T plus T s equal to V c for the boundary condition and the controller switch transistors, uh, transistors off when integral voltage equals to the carrier wave and thus V i D T s equal to V c D T s equal to V control D T 1 minus D T and thus I c s by this one and ultimately R e V control equal to D T 1 minus D T V T by I s and this is the value of the effective resistance or the V control. So, what we can say that this is the overall part, this is the integrator reset is a, a current source that is coming from this coupling inductor and the capacitor and this is a V control and ultimately V control will be reflected as a current source. So, once capacitor will be saturated then by this, this will be and this will be resetted. This is the average current mode control for this generation of the
parabolic carrier wave or because you can see that this is the parabolic carrier wave. Now, I have finished mainly the single phase power, uh, power quality problem that has been desired uh, generated for the diode based rectifier for the single phase operation. Now, we shall require to take the industrial one that is for the three phase. So, first we will discuss the problem of three phase converters and the kind of harmonic content it there. Uh, because of the time constraint, I leave out that portion of the problem of the single phase, you are no well aware of the fact. And now we shall take out the three phase solution of it with the higher power rating. So, we shall first discuss about the three phase, uh, three phase solution uh, in a different mode, then we shall discuss in last three phase PWM converter. Thank you for attention.